Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk. I'm Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Services. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce you to Andrew Brown. He is with Statewide Mortgage, and uh, Andrew and I have worked together for, I don't, I'm going to say 15 years to I'd be safe. I'd say probably about 15. But it's probably a little bit more. You know, I was thinking back the other night, Andrew, of all the deals we've closed. There's there's hundreds of deals that we've closed between our team and your and Statewide Mortgage over the years. But I remember it was one of the first times I'd used you, and I'd realized you you really knew your stuff. And this was probably 15 years ago. And I had a client that was had a very good job, uh, plenty of money in the bank, and was trying to buy a house that was at the top of his budget. And at that time, I'd say it was 2009, and uh, it was about a 296. I think it was 296 is what we paid for it. So anyway, the he was a furniture mover. Yeah, he, yeah, he had a moving company, had a trucking company. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the first loans that we did work on. And and I mean, I mean, I'll never forget it. You wowed me on that loan, but. Yeah, he had been to like local banks. He had been to mortgage people, and they just none of them could figure out how to source his income. I think and really like make it work within the confines of a loan yeah. application. No, I remember that. Yeah, he was self employed, and yes. that's what made it hard because you know with a self employed borrower, you're not using W twos, you're using tax returns, and it just seems like all the rules changed there around that time with self employed yes. borrowers. We didn't have the stated income loans that we used to, which were really designed for that kind of a borrower. Um, and so, yeah, no, I remember exactly what you're talking about. We actually, uh, we got on the phone with, if I remember right, we got on the phone with his accountant yeah. and just started to tell the accountant how the loan process works. Because that's funny because mm-hmm. so many of those guys, you know, everybody kind of does what they do and we don't really let that bleed over. So I was talking to the accountant. I remember that deal specifically because I learned a lot on yeah. that deal. So just talking with the accountant, I think we depreciated his truck yeah. is what we did. Yeah. yeah. He had a semi that he had just bought. And so we were talking to to the accountant and going over, well, he had not filed his taxes yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the accountant was able to say, well, wait a minute, we've got some debts in here. I didn't know what to do with them or where to put them. And then just him understanding how the loan process works and then me understanding what, mm-hmm. you know, on that tax side, I learned a lot on that deal. Yeah. Because that was definitely a head scratcher for a while. It, it was. We were like, he's making plenty of money. He's, you know, he's got yeah. cash in the bank. He's just not showing it. You know, right. he's writing it off. And he should. Yes. These self-employed guys get beat up enough as it is. And so if I remember right, he ended up, because he depreciated that truck, he still didn't, he still showed a zero net. Yeah. But we added back the depreciation. So he didn't pay taxes but he was still able to get his house off, of, it, off of what we depreciated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that seems simple just with us sitting there talking about it. But I'm telling you, he had been through four or five good local lenders uh, that he had searched out, this, that, and other. And, you know, I got him hooked up with you, and we started getting that ball and rolling. And uh, I forget what program he was applying for, but I know there was something to do with his house. And uh being the realtor, you know, trying to make the deal work for my seller and you, my buyer. You bought his house. I, I remember that. Buying yeah. his house. Yeah. And it wasn't a, a big, lavish house. It was a starter home. But I knew that this guy was doing everything we told him to yeah. do. And he was straightforward. And, he, you know, you could tell he was going to do whatever it took legally right. to to get this house purchased No, he was very family. clear about that. He's like, I don't want this. I remember, yeah, I don't want this house if, if it's not going to work out. But yeah. if we can make it work out, you know, that's why it was nice to reach out to the accountant and make sure that we were doing, you know, doing all that in that realm. And then you on your end, it's like, well, it makes sense for me to buy this yeah. because there's there's equity here. Yeah. And, you know, we're all happy. Yeah. So he got the house of his dreams. And, yeah, yeah. it's a win-win. So They're not always a win-win. Not, not that always. Was a win-win. <laughs> well, and it was funny. Like this was the deal that just kept throwing surprises yeah. at us. Uh, so we're literally Andrew's got us to the closing table or right right about to it, and we we all go in again. I've got the seller. I, I know the seller. I've I've met the buyer. I've been working with him. We've become friends. So we're all sitting um, in the in the title company's, I guess, reception area. Andrew's still on the phone with the title company, like getting things lined out. Didn't you take everybody to lunch? I had to. So 
Um, I remember that. We, this we needed, was 15 years ago. Yeah, I can't it believe was. you remember all this. Well, I'll never forget it. So, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to the buyer and the seller, and we're we're going along. And there there was somebody in the in the room that had been sitting in one of the chairs for quite a while, and I'd been just kind of standing up, trying to be the gentleman, right? Well, and and with all this going on, you were telling me, you know, hey, probably need to go take lunch. We should have this ready by the time we get back. And you know, like as a lender and a realtor, we're both going, ooh, this is this is not what we want to hear. All like, right. you know, the, the underwriting is, is still working. And it's like, oh boy, so we're all nervous, and I'm got a folder of all the closing documents in my hand, and I sit down, and everybody's going, whoa, whoa, as I'm sitting down, and I'm like, we, I sit down, I'm like, well, what's the matter? Like, uh. You, you might need to go to the bathroom and check your you pants. You had it all over your shorts. I remember <laughs> that. And I get up and I've got this, I don't know what, uh -huh. but we'll just call it crap, all over the back of my shorts. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, oh my gosh, can this deal get any better? And so I was able to go in and get get cleaned up. So we go to we go to Tumbleweed right up the street from the closing company and with my wet shorts in the rear. And, you know, I buy everybody lunch. And, and let me tell you, it's it's pretty quiet. Because everybody's like, the seller's like, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? The buyer's sitting there going, oh my God, is this yeah. going to happen? I've done so my house to the agent and this, that, and the other. Well, we went to Tumbleweed. We had a good lunch. Uh, we come back. Andrew met us at the door and he said, we're ready to go. Yeah. And we got it done. And I'll tell you to this day that that buyer has never forgotten about it. Uh, he honestly called me back about a month ago to come take a look at his house. He's really? thinking about it's it's too big for him and his family right now. He's start working too much. He's ready to start downsizing. Okay. But you know, he never forgot Andrew or or I and the stuff we were all work together as a team. And it feels so good to have a buyer or a seller that'll work with you. Yeah. And 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 you know, you give them advice and they take it and they go with it. But you know, the good news of that story, Andrew, is you got him alone. And now he's sitting on that home that he paid, I think, two ninety six for is worth about seven fifty. Oh, every yeah, every bit long. Of, it tells you how long we've been in this it, business. It's, it's, it's showing that you know we got some yeah. gray. We've got, <laughs> yeah, we, we've earned every gray hair. I ain't no question about it. I mean, some of these. I think that's that's a quintessential metaphor for what we do. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we sit in somebody else's stuff. And then it's like we got to get it cleaned up. We got to get it cleaned off, and then we got to you know kind of kind of move on. That's the perfect metaphor for what we do. I think as a as a as a broker, that's that's what separates us. I think more yeah. than anything else, you know, being able to work with all of those different mm -hmm. lenders. Um, I I know what you're talking about there too, though. That was the difference with statewide too, because back then we had to wait and let the the lender fund that loan out. Mm -hmm. Now with where statewide is at, and and man, it's something to be with the right company. It makes mm -hmm. a big difference. I think I've been with statewide now for 15 years. Yeah. So, but to uh, we fund our own loans now, and so that makes a big yeah. difference for us. That's that's been a game changer as well. Being able to say, well, we're going to fund our own loans, and then we work out some of that other stuff on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, and that just makes the experience so much better for the customer. Yeah. You know, sitting around those closing rooms and, and waiting now, I think closings take about 30 minutes. And yeah. In the past, you know, you run into that occasional mm -hmm. hour, hour and 15 yeah. minute closing because you're waiting on somebody else to check all these boxes yeah. off. Especially when you're when you're doing you know things like with that loan that underwriters aren't used to seeing you know oh well, this is where the income is coming from mm -hmm. that kind of thing so yeah it's interesting it's never there's never a dull moment in this job I always say it's kind of like juggling twenty Rubik's cubes at the same time <laughs> while you're trying to fix them I mean it just there's never a dull moment yeah no it's uh, it, the uh, I think in this market more than any markets I've been in is that the experience is going to win. Oh, yeah. You know, if you can find a lender with experience, an agent with experience, because you've seen a few things. What's that commercial? We've seen a few things, an insurance company. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> We've seen a few things. Well, and you just do so much of it over and over and over. And even if you look at it and it's a different situation, there's been a similar situation yeah. and you've got that confidence. I think that's a lot of it. These new loan officers are coming in and it's just like, well, I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't know I could adjust that. I didn't know I could, I didn't think to pay that off, right? You know, I didn't think to lower his homeowner's insurance. Just simple things can save a deal. Yeah. I mean, we just we just closed a deal that one of the local banks could not get done because of job history. Right. And it's like, well, if it, the, the requirements are if you just go back a, a few more years, as long as you can show that job history, you're good. And, and a loan that the local bank couldn't get done and the customer was just bawling, we closed it in two weeks. That's awesome. So it, it, I think it's just that, like you said, it's just that experience. Mm -hmm. And then having the freedom 
that's what I love about being a broker. Yeah. I came into this business that I was I was in retail. You know, I came in I came in this business different than what a lot of people did. Um, I actually started in this industry. Um, well, not in the industry, but just in my life. Um, I was a, a drill instructor at a boot camp. Really. And then and from there I went to Job Corps. So I really was more about counseling and people, and it was really just God's grace that kind of yeah. brought me around with the way things were. Uh, Debbie was pregnant with our first, uh, and I actually, our second, second, yeah, Tanner. And I actually went in to a class. So she was doing an internship through a bank. And it was just met the right people at the right time. God's grace just mm-hmm. kind of took over from that moment. Um, I'll never forget the, the when I started, the first place, you know, whatever. I sat down with the... Uh, with the guy, and he's like, I think you're right for this business, but I don't have a place for you. Mm-hmm. So if you want to put your computer on top of the, the uh, refrigerator in the break room <laughs> for the first three or four months, I, I, I think you'd be good for this. And I was nervous. I think the only person that believed in me at that time would be right. my wife. <laughs> you know, she's like, you can do this. Like, you know people. And that's, yeah. you know, and, I, and, uh, and that's been the difference. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, there's some people that we will work with. I there's nothing wrong with doing that loan. It all works out. Everything's good. Offering the best program and services. But there's something about working with that customer that you've been working with for six to eight months. Helping them. Building their credit, teaching them what to do, showing them what this looks like. So many people just don't know. Well, they don't teach it. No. Who teaches you how to go about applying you know, for a loan or really how to balance your checkbook? Like when I was in school, you could take an accounting class. You could take some classes, but nobody really talked to you about applying for a loan or how to leverage properties or or any of that. And I think it's somebody like you that actually takes the time to like, look, we're going to work with you. You know, yeah. you're not ready yet, but within six to eight months, we'll get you there. We'll build you. And I think that's the thing. The best analogy you gave me is like, we build the, we build the credit, we build the person, and we build the deal. Yeah, we we put everybody on my my thing. With just always been, we put everybody on the path to home ownership. Mm-hmm. If you listen to us and you'll do the things we say and you'll change your spending habits and your credit habits, I'll teach you what you need to learn do to to to, to buy a house, you yeah. know, to buy that first house. It's funny that you mentioned that with the school. So I got the feeling that last year, and I so I did. I reached out to one of the local high schools, and I was actually talking to the principal, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I don't understand why you all don't do this, and I don't understand why you all don't whatever." And he just came back at me with, why don't you put your money where your mouth is, or at least your time. <laughs> right. He's like, I've got a finance class. Why don't you come in and speak to him? So Perfect. we've actually started doing that. Nice. So I started going into one of the local high schools here and talking to the kids about, this is what credit is, and this is what happens, and this is why it is so important. And this is what a student loan looks like. That's probably the biggest difference yeah. that I see. When I came into the business, it was credit card, credit card, credit cards. I really don't see the level of credit card debt that I saw prior to 2008. Really? I really don't. What I see is student loan indebtedness. The student loans, man, they are they are eating these kids up. So not understanding what they're getting into, not understanding maybe that some of these local schools might make give them just as good an education right. and not a $60,000 bill when they mm-hmm. come out. Uh, you know, I definitely think there's some education that needs to happen. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, what has been something recently, uh, I know I heard in the office, um, with one of my agents had a deal with you and it got right down to the closing and, uh, he had taken a loan maybe, which we always tell our yeah, buyers. No, like, yeah. Don't take any you're loans. talking about Angie Hamilton's deal. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. love Angie. You have it's such a great group of agents, man. Uh, it's a real family over there. I really, I gotta say that. Yeah. It's uh, I've been in a lot of different places and worked with a lot of different people. And you're really building a family We're trying in this to. environment. You're taking your time and you're doing it slow. And I think that's the right way to do it. You, you really are. So, yeah, props to you. But, no, um, that was actually somebody that, um, yeah, we would gotten to the, we, you know, that it kills me. Because we send out a booklet in the beginning. It says, don't back out any new credit that you don't tell me about. The very first page of the application, very first page, statewide goes out of their way to have their own page on there. And it's like, do not take out <laughs> any credit that we do not talk about. Your credit will be checked at the end. Mm-hmm. And we're going through this guy, and it was already a tough one. Right. The income wasn't quite what the borrower said it was. It never never fully is. Right. You know, they, they don't always quite know exactly what they make. It's funny to me. But, no, we got to the end, and we were telling them the whole time, look, this is a 100% loan, but you still have closing costs. You're still going to need about $4,300. 
okay, I've got it. I've got it. It's coming in from work. Everything's good. I got it. I'm like, you know, they're going to source that. They need to know where it came from. And I and, and you walk them through it and you tell them, and God love them. I mean, they just yeah. don't do it every day. Right. And so, no, we got into the end. And I was like, you know, you still only have twenty seven hundred dollars, is what I, you know, what I have in your statement here. Oh no, no, I've got seventy five hundred in there. We're good now. We're good. Okay, that's great. I just need to show where it came from. Why do you need to know that? <laughs> well, it's, it's important. We have to be able to make sure that you know that we we understand what you know how you got it. Well, well, I took out a loan. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, your heart just drops, right? Right. I mean, every one of us have had that. They took they they went and bought a couch. They went and bought a refrigerator. They went and bought a car. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, he said he said, well, I took out a loan. I was like, well, why did you do that? He said, well, I just didn't think you were going to catch me. <laughs> I, was, I was like, well, this is not cops and robbers. No. <laughs> I'm not here, but we've got to show where this money came from. So no, um, yeah, we we got it done. A situation like that, best thing to do is I just call the underwriter. Yeah, and say, look, straightforward. Here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what happened. How do we fix it? What do you feel comfortable with? What will you do? And, and I think that's also where you get into the experience. I yeah. think, you, like you said before, I think um, even in my youth, even in my beginning of my career, I don't know. I would have maybe tried to fix that myself or just said we don't have a loan right. as opposed to building that relationship with underwriters to where they know that when you're telling them, man, you they got to know it's the God's honest it's truth. truth. Yeah. If they don't know that, because they're going to be held accountable too, mm-hmm. and we we forget about that. You know, they're held accountable if something goes off on that loan. That underwriter, they're the one. Why did you sign off on this? Right. So building that relationship with the underwriters. You know, even though we work with hundreds of different banks, I'd say primarily we send to about ten to twelve. Okay. And so you just get to that relationship after a while, and you know the type of loan to send to certain to certain banks and certain lenders. Um, but yeah, just picking up the phone. Here's what happened. Here's what the customer did. Obviously, I didn't share the, he didn't think we were going to catch him part. Right. But, you know, and that's what we do, though, man. Square yeah. pegs in, in round holes. I mean, it constantly seems like if we're not thinking outside of the box, you know. I, I remember getting a phone call from an appraiser one time. And he's like, look, it's southern Indiana. I mean, you know, a lot of our houses, you know, we're in the rural areas and everything. And he's like, you know, it's not a farm. <laughs> But there's a cow right in the front of this <laughs> of this house, like you know. And I call the customer, and he's like, "Well, it's really more of a house pet. Like it's a cow. Like, an underwriter in Chicago is not necessarily going to understand that this is, a, you know." So the appraiser's on there shooing the cow away, trying to get him out of the picture, and you know, and it just one thing after another. It never ceases to amaze me how much you know. It, everything is great. You walk into a Friday, everything looks good, and by Monday, you're 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 putting out fires. We're pulling our hair out. We're, We're running out, out of hair. <laughs> oh, I tell my kids, square pegs and round holes. Yeah. Just constantly putting square pegs and round holes. And, and that's our job. Like, it's not a complaint. That's what we do. And actually, I think for you and I, it's like, we like to figure out the problems. We like to make it work. We get addicted to it at some it's, point. It, you know. It's kind of, it's. I it, love the easy it, deal. But yes. I'll take the easy take deal. The easy deal. <laughs> it makes it easier to be able to do these other deals. Yeah. But I think just being known in the industry is the, the people to. Okay, you can't get the job, the, job, the job done, send it to those guys. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's, you know, I've found over the years the people that we helped in those situations are the most thankful, loyal, and they're going to send you all their friends and all their family because they know what you're able to do for them. Yeah. And I've been living, I'm same as you, off of referrals from, you know, the short sale market for, you know, where these people were losing their homes and we come in, saved them, saved their credit, got them in something and got them out of another one, you know, and like those people are the ones that call me, check on me, see how I'm doing. You know, and actually send me send me clients. But if you if you don't have word of mouth in this if, if business, if, if they're not out there talking you up and telling people what you've done, first off, I question what are you doing in the first place. You're probably right. out to just make money, right? And at that point, I feel like it's going to take care of itself, especially in Southern Indiana. It's small. you know everybody has to trust everybody. We know everybody in this area. Um, I'll, I'll get calls all the time. I'm working with such and such. You know, I'm like that's a great loan officer. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no reason to even consider, you know, whatever. I, I will never take bread off anybody's plate. Right. But, you know, you get that call. Well, I'm working with Rocket Mortgage. I'm working with one of these internet bank lenders. Those are the ones that I'm like, let me give you a competitive offer. Yes. You know, let me give you a quote. Let me let you know what, what could happen. Let me know what pricing should look like. Because, I mean, 
you get into this business and and you find out real quick um, how easily a customer can be taken down yeah. the wrong road. Oh yeah, um, and that is so much easier, obviously, to get in front of the deal in the beginning. Taking care of somebody else's junk is kind of like what you did. Slip. Sitting in somebody else's stuff and then having to clean it all off. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, that's pretty much every day's mess, you know. Absolutely. But I like it, and uh, I think that's what we're good at. Uh, you know, we can we can do the easy deals all day long, but sometimes the, we're blessed. We're blessed, and you know, it feels good to help people. It does. It, it does. It's 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 rewarding. I mean, the checks are great, but at the end of the day, when I can sit back and I go back to that gentleman's house, and his house went from two ninety six which was a home they told him he couldn't buy. You were able to help him get it in. And now he's sitting on $300,000 worth of equity. Yeah. That, that feels pretty good. It feels good. That feels good. <laughs> it feels good. And if I'm not doing something that I can't put my head down on the pillow and be out at five minutes, you know, after, it's just not worth it. Andrew, today's market. What's some good advice you would have for buyers that, that are, you know, thinking about buying a house? Uh, what are some of the options, maybe directions you would send them in? Uh, what's some things that you've been doing here lately that's been helping? Well, as far as Southern Indiana, um, I think you've done a great thing teaming up with Murphy Homes and Murphy Real Estate. Sure. Uh, Chase Murphy, Murphy Homes, uh, he's gone out of his way to build in a price point that buyers can afford, mm -hmm. that all buyers can afford. I really thought that was, I was impressed with that. You know, a lot of, you know, he, he and, and we've got great builders in this area. Sure. You know, and Chase is building top end homes too. He's building customs. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that last one was seven fifty. Um, but to be able to offer the two nineteens and the two twenty nine, um, and price points that other builders are just not at. Um, I think that's, that's, that's one thing buying outside of your means, Yeah. you know? Um, but I think you said it best. I heard you talking about it the other day, you know, um, you marry the home, you date the rate. Yeah. And people need to understand that we are we are in a, a rising rate uh, economy, but I do see it turning. Mm -hmm. so I do feel like the feds have maybe they'll raise it one more time, and I do feel like we're going to start seeing it go the other way. I think when we got into this industry, just talking to the guys over at statewide, or when we got into this rising um, market, we thought it would top out around seven and an eighth. I think I saw on bank rate the other day it was seven point four. So bank rate's going to be a little higher. It's taking yeah. a national average. So seven and an eighth. Now we're not in the seven and an eighth range because I think we're able to show customers a more intelligent way to use their money and to use their equity. Right. And what I mean by that is um, what we're seeing now is a lot of buy downs on yeah. the interest rate. But there's a lot of customers that don't understand that. But without getting in the weeds, it makes a lot more sense to buy your interest rate down a percent or a percent and a half than it does to maybe offer less. On a, on a house. Right. So what I mean by that is if you're going into a house and it's worth 300000 but you're thinking, well, I'm going to offer, you know, two eighty five, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to offer two ninety. dollars um, already you're going to set the seller off, right? Yeah. They're already annoyed. They know it's still somewhat of a seller's market. Um, and what I'm telling customers is, look, go all the way in. Maybe even go above ask. Go two mm -hmm. or 3000 above ask. But ask. For ten thousand in closing costs, ten thousand in closing. Yeah, look, we're going to take six thousand dollars and buy down your interest rate. You're going to take the other four thousand dollars and pay off your closing costs. So the difference on a three hundred thousand dollar house, and that's what people don't understand. You're talking about maybe three hundred dollars on your payment. Mm -hmm. Well, to get your payment three hundred dollars less from three hundred thousand, you're going to talk. You're going to have to offer a lot less, <laughs> right? And at the end of the day, we're going to. Where none of us are going to be in this in this in interest rate or anything like that. We're all going to refinance. We're all going to end up, you know, it, down the line, probably mm -hmm. refinancing one or two times, which I'm sure they're banking on. Uh, but, you know, things like that. Things that you're not stuck in this interest rate, you know, you can find ways to get a lower payment and a fixed payment. Yeah. I do see a lot of the other, you know, three, two, one buy downs and things like that. I don't like that. I think yeah. that that pays the, the loan officer and, and not the buyer. Yeah. It, it causes me, um, when customers talk about that, I got to qualify you off of a higher rate. Right. I, you know, I'm trying to get you the, the most house for the lowest payment, mm -hmm. which means I want to qualify you off of a, the lowest fixed rate that I can. Right. So on those three, two, one buy downs, you got to qualify them off that final the high interest rate. rate. Well, yeah. shoot, Jeremy, you know, I mean, some of these deals that we're doing, we're getting done by 10, 15, $20. Because interest rates are still so high. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about $1,600 payments on $230,000 homes. I mean, that's just not where we were. I mean, no. 
two and a half years ago, I think we were talking about it earlier, two and a half years ago, we were talking about interest rates in the twos. You know, we were closing 2.8, 2.5. Now we're looking at, you know, even with buy downs, we're looking at 5.9, 6.125. So you're talking about $1,600 payments. That used to be a $380,000 yeah. home. So I think more than anything, buyers just educating themselves on, yes, interest rates are still high, but there's a way to still keep that payment reasonable, Yeah. Uh, and especially if they buy within their price range. Yeah. And I mean, just kind of doing the math, like, and I've, I've told my clients this too, like, yeah, we might be able to get it for $10,000 less in sticker, but you'd be better off asking for $10,000 in closing cost and buy down because say it saves you 400 a month on a payment. Yeah. Take that times 30 years. That's almost 5,000 a year. That's 150,000 over 30 years you saved versus 10,000 on the asking price. Exactly. So it's 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 that 10,000 that you ask that seller to pay, even if you give full price, just saved you 150,000 exactly. over the term of the loan. So it's a no-brainer. I just think that you know we had to switch gears from, you know, back yes. in the day you'd offer less cuz the rates were already low. Exactly. And now you're just having to really like think about it like the price is what it is get the rate, buy it down, and then live with that rate to something better comes along and then refi. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going to save even more. But no, I think like right now, that's the best way to approach. And like Murphy Homes, new construction, 10-year warranty. Yeah, he's you know, gone. Brand he's, new. He's going to he's gonna give you a buy down if he, if he uses it statewide. Yeah. He's going to let you have a $5,000 buy down, yeah. which is these rates are going from, I, I can't remember the rates today, but they're taking a significant amount off that rate. I mean, we're getting almost a point. Yeah, point to a point and a half, depending on circumstances and situations. Now, Chase Chase set that up for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, when he came into this, he saw two years ago, year and a half ago, we would talk about this market's going to turn. Mm -hmm. And when it does, where do we need to be? Right. Because we felt like you just couldn't continue to go with what we were seeing out there, especially the money that was being put out. You knew inflation was coming. Mm -hmm. You knew that this was going to be a, a, a natural cause of, of what was happening in the, in the, um, in the government. And so he actually, you know, we sat down and we started to talk about where can we position ourselves so that we can offer the most home for the least amount of money to these buyers, you know, that we felt like we're going to be out there. We felt like they were going to be left in the wind. And I think that's the thing. He's done a great job. Mm -hmm. He's like, Drew, where do I sit down and and how do I get them? And we were buying down probably six to eight months before anybody yeah. was even thinking you about it. You hadn't heard nothing about it. No. We were now you see everybody kind of jumping on that bandwagon, and that's fine. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It's you the know? way to go. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But um, he's so far ahead of that. And then buy, building in that price point. I think that's, again, that's where that – Murphy Homes and Ward Realty and teaming up and then having your agents out there doing what they're doing. It, it's worked out really well. I'm I'm loving the situation. Well, and one of the things I think that's another benefit that you offer is the one-time close. You know, that has been a powerful yes. tool. You know, Murphy's the only uh, builder in the area qualified for mm -hmm. that. And you've come up with a program where basically somebody can go out, find a lot or get their parents to give, us a, give them a lot, whatever, get a house plan. Have the bank appraise, have go through you, have 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 the appraisal done on the house and on the land. As long yeah. as that comes up to the purchase price you all have agreed on, they go ahead and close the loan, fund it, and your house is being built. And and you know it's it's done. You didn't have to put any money down. There's only one closing, one closing cost. And I'm sure you could go on on the benefits, but that's been exciting to me. Like we've been able to put people in brand new homes who thought they couldn't buy a home. Yeah. In the two, 200s to 260s, you know, a new home on a lot somewhere that they found or we found for them, not a dollar in the game. And 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 while they're sitting there, their house is being built. Uh, they can be living in their rental at the, at the time or they can wait and sell their house later that they're living in currently. But that house can be built with no money down. And I think right now with the shortage of inventory we've got, like there's not enough homes yeah. to be able to go out. For 100% financing through USDA, Rural Housing, a great program, and buy a brand new home, design it, and have it built, it's unheard of. So It, it was a game changer. Yeah. It, it really was. And when I saw that, started to see that product out there and started to do a little bit more and more research about it, at first it's one of those, man, this sounds too good to be true. Right. Because traditionally, you know, when you go to a, when you go in there and you, you go to a bank, 
I, I mean, you got to put 15, 20% down. Yeah. Or if you're buying the land, you sometimes in that situation, you put more and yeah. pay the land up front. So to be able to take both of those together, find the land that you want, get with Murphy, Murphy Homes, and just sit down and build that custom the way that you want to build it. And and that was another one, seeing just the inventory situation that you guys were in. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing the fact that, uh, I mean, if you remember a year and a half ago, we were offering thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars above ask. Yeah. And you were paying it whether it appraised for that value or not. Yep. You was it was on the, the contract. So realizing that inventory, you know, and what we have, um, just because of the rising interest rates, you know, um, man, that that's made made a big difference. And Chase jumping in there, um, that's not a. Ju- I, I actually I offer that to another builder in this area, um, but looking at it. You got to have a, a a a different constitution, yeah, for that loan, right? Yeah. Because all of the risk falls on the builder, yeah, because it's a one time close. So with it being a one time close, everything is done and funded out before you turn a shovel of dirt over. Mm-hmm. Well, any changes that are made, anything in material costs. You remember when material costs Going went up, up right? Yeah. You know, lumber package goes up. It's already done. You know, some of these other builders are looking at that and they're like, oh, no, we don't. They like those change notices. Yes, where they can change exactly. in price. <laughs> Put it on the buyer. Put yeah. it on the buyer. Chase is like, you know, I feel like I can build this product and I can do it in such a way that I can absorb that and we'll be okay. Um, and a game changer for yeah. sure. And be able to offer that to Ward Realty. You guys have done a great job with that program. It's been great. And, and Andrew couldn't come at a better time for the people out here like I think a lot of people don't know about the program. We need to do a better job as, as agents educating these guys what's out there. And, and I hope that uh, any of our viewers watching today will feel free to reach out to you or I or one of our agents and get some information on that because really the, the inventory is so low. And I think right now 30% of the inventory out there is new construction, but a lot of it's in the high, you know, 400s, 500s and up. Where you know Murphy Homes is, we've got them at two nineteen up to maybe three hundred. Right. But it's the inventory is going fast. These yes. homes are selling fast because they're the best buy in the town. Yeah, we're I mean, getting them selling before they hit the yeah before they're really hitting the dirt, especially yeah. on a one time close. Like exactly. it's closed before we even done the foundation down here. But it's been a great product. You guys have been an extremely good company. You know to work with it statewide, and we look forward to do a, a lot more business with you. Hey. Now next week we got a firecracker coming on. It's Debbie. Oh, it's Andrew's watch body. out, world! <laughs> she Man, is, she is, brings energy to the table. She will have she's energy awesome. for us next week. Uh, she's the head of sales for Murphy Homes, and she'll have a lot of good stories and, and be able to tell you a little bit about the products that Murphy's uh, handling and and offering his people right now. But Andrew, I want to thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. It's it's been a while since we've been able to talk about old time stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, as we yeah. sit here, I just had more and more coming through my, my mind. And uh, people have told me uh, and agents we talk about, you know, we should write a book. Yes. But well, what we need to do is remember to tell the story. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, You're so busy going on to the next story, next deal, the next, next deal, story. the next circumstance. <laughs> and, you know, somebody's world is always falling apart, and you're putting it back together. But. Yep. It's been, man, coming on board with you guys, working with Ward Realty. Uh, it, it's, it's been everything, you know, honestly. It really has made a big difference to the point, I, I think we were talking about the other day, now my son's in this, yeah. you know, and so it's a family thing all the it way around. So thing. definitely blessed, man. We are Absolutely. definitely blessed. It's, you know, it's definitely been a God thing for us, just opening our business and just the people that's been brought in with you and Murphy and just the people that's coming to our business. It's, it's fun. Yeah. You know, it's it's not as stressful as you is. Well, we've as been it doing this be. for twenty years. That's the that's the scary that's part. The scary like, part, you know. We've that's gone a pretty good a lot looking, of markets. Pretty good looking guy when I started this. Now yeah. I've got wrinkles and extra weight. I right hair. I mean, you know, it's now it's just growing down here and it's all white. But that's the only place I can. Uh, we get love it. what we do. We're yeah. blessed to do it. Wake up every day looking to do some more. So. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate you uh, tuning in to us, and if for more local. Real estate information, please subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel. We'll talk to you soon.